Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. If you're familiar with the roles in Exchange 2007, then you're familiar with the roles in Exchange 2010. They didn't change. So we have the mailbox role, the hub transport role, the client access server role, the edge transport server role, and the unified messaging role. And the reason Microsoft went away from just one Microsoft Exchange server is because that was a lot less scalable. So they broke it up into roles. And we can actually put these individual roles on the same server, all except for the edge transport server role. That needs to be on its own server. Or we can break them all up on different servers. So it allows us to be much more scalable in the area that we need to scale. For example, if we have a lot of users that have very large mailboxes, we may need to have multiple mailbox servers that run the mailbox role. But we might not need to have multiple hub transport roles or client access server roles. And vice versa, we may need multiple hub transport roles or multiple client access roles or multiple unified messaging roles. And we have the ability to break those out and put them on their own server. So that's why they came up with roles with Exchange 2007 and continued it in Exchange 2010. So now let's talk about each role. The first one is the mailbox role. And this is going to have your mailbox databases. Your mailbox databases are where your mailbox actually lives. So all the calendars, the contacts, the emails, the attachments, all of that live in a mailbox database, which is run by the mailbox role in Exchange 2010. Next is the hub transport role. This role controls the routing of emails. So it handles the sending and receiving and is responsible for a mail or an email getting to its final destination, which is either to a mail server on the internet or to one of our mailbox servers. The next role is the client access server role. And this role basically manages the access to your mailbox. So there are a number of different ways we can access a mailbox. We can use Outlook Web App. We can use ActiveSync to access our mailbox on our phone. We can use Outlook. And by the way, with Exchange 2010, Outlook actually contacts the client access server. So previously, it would contact the mailbox server directly. So now it truly is the point of contact to access your mailbox. The next role is the edge transport server role. This role is kind of unique in that it isn't part of your Active Directory domain or at least not the part are not part of a domain that your exchange server belongs to and this server acts as a gateway to send and receive emails let's take a look at a diagram here's a di diagram of a very common exchange layout basically inside our internal network behind our firewall we have our exchange server which will house our mailbox role, our client access server role, and our hub transport role. And then we have a perimeter network or DMZ that houses our edge transport server. And when a user outside sends an email to our, a user in our organization, it's sent through our firewall into the DMZ to our edge transport server. And our edge transport server will handle things like spam filtering, it can handle virus checking, it can also make sure the user is a valid user, and if it if everything checks out, then it will send an email that email down to the hub transport server role, and then the hub transport server role will be responsible for getting it to the correct mailbox server. But we don't have to have an edge transport server. That one is optional. The three roles we have to have are the client access server, the mailbox role, and your hub transport role. So you have to have those, and we can actually make email sent directly to our hub transport server. And the last role is going to be our unified messaging role. This is basically going to allow us to receive our voicemail to our inbox and then we can access our voicemail from Outlook, from the Outlook web app, or our phone. We can also receive faxes to our inbox. Now with Exchange 2010, 
Uh, we do need a third-party tool to handle the incoming fax part, but it is possible with the unified messaging role. 